reaching out there. Uh oh, it goes the bell, Ted. I guess we better <laughs> we better mute up. Welcome to the Rotary Club of Beaumont, the seventy second club founded in the world where our members serve to change lives. We're glad you're here. Now, those on Zoom, uh, we ask you to mute your microphone, except for you, Rosie Delano, keep your microphone on. And if you would take a minute now to check into your book space page, uh, our face, my, yes, if you would check in, please. It was a historic day. May 23rd, 1972, that's 49 years ago, when the club's board approved the first two black members, men of course, since membership did not include women in 1972. One of those men was attorney Elmo Will Willard III, proposed by Bill Devey. The other, Joe E. Bryant Jr., principal of Odom Junior High School, proposed by Ed Dix 49 years ago. The speaker that week, yes. The speaker that week was federal judge Joe Fisher, who spoke on the topic, the challenge of change. Speaking of change, let me read a letter to you received by your board of directors at yesterday's board meeting. It's dated September 28th, yesterday. Dear board members, after 10 and a half years and 547 issues of the Rotary Grams, but who's counting, I am submitting my letter of resignation as Executive Director of the Rotary Club, effective December 31st, 2021. It has been my privilege to serve with you in the club's mission of service. I am so appreciative of those who originally had enough confidence in my abilities to hire me. And I thank you all, all the board members since March of 2011, who have allowed me to continue. The club has accomplished a great deal during those years, and I am privileged to have been a small part of it. With much gratitude, Jackie Chapman. You should know that the board took no action on that resignation. <laughs> so I've called a special committee to uh, approve by your board to be approved by your board in search of an executive director. Uh, the search committee would be comprised of past president Floyd McSpadden, past district governor, past president Becky Mason, past president Tim Sedella past president Cindy Cherry and president elect Joanne Brown. These five members will serve as our search committee. Uh, myself, uh, along with vice president uh, Uliana Trelowski and executive director Jackie Chapman will serve the search committee as ex officio members. You should also know that Cindy Cherry is already busy working side by side with Jackie in the office to better define for the committee the job description and requirements of this position. So, you know, we know that Jackie has set the requirements and she's set the description um, and she set the bar high so that the board uh, can post the opening and uh, have the position filled well before the calendar year end. A moment of silence. This is tough stuff. And uh, our board is uh, one of the best boards I've ever served with. Uh, and Jackie acknowledges that as well. And she knows that she leaves this in strong hands. And you've heard the names of the search committee. And we'll be OK. We'll be different. But as you just heard a uh, reference to uh, federal judge Joe Fisher's uh, comments, uh, change happens and we shouldn't be alarmed by it. At the head table leading our invocation will be Rosemary. Well, Rosemary Delano is on Zooms. She's the director of Inter internal audit, Beaumont Independent School District leading our invocation. Pledges Alan Sampson, partner of Binkenstein and Oxford LLP. An introduction of guests by Mary Poole, marketing consultant, Baptist Hospitals of Southeast Texas. Rosemary? 
Good afternoon. Please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day and every day. We realize each day is precious. We thank you for this time of fellowship, even if it's via virtual. Thank you for the opportunity to learn about our local schools and to hear from an educator principal who's out there working with our students every day. Lord, we ask you to come and join us today as we strive to learn how we can help in the education of our local children, including our own children and our grandchildren. I ask you, Lord, bless each and every person here today with good health, with wisdom, and with clear direction and focus. We ask you to touch the children of Beaumont to guide them and lead them as they develop into young adults. Lord, we ask you to watch over our schools and protect our students, our teachers, our school leaders, our staff. Lord, we ask you that you would give a healthy, safe, loving learning environment for each student. And it's my prayer that their education includes learning about you, Lord, and so that they could leave lives that are pleasing. I pray these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Please join me in our pledge to the United States of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, if you would join me with our pledge to the great state of Texas. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to you, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Well, good afternoon, Rotarians. It's my honor today to introduce you to our guest. So when I call your name, would you please stand with your Rotarian so we can give you a great big Southeast Texas welcome. First, Jody Slaughter, who is a guest of Bob Spina. Caitlin Bain, Jacob Dick, and Stephanie Harris, guest of Mary Pool. Wilton Allen, guest of Hannah Latool. Also, Dr. Anita Frank, guest of Hannah Latool. Welcome. Marcus Vasquez, guest of Steve Lucas, all the way in the back. Rihanna Hoft, guest of Kara Timberlake. Tiffany Eckenrod, guest of Uliana Trakowski. And last but certainly not least, Carl Lambreth, guest of John Lee. Welcome, and we hope you enjoy your lunch and wanna come back. Thank you, Mary. Um, all the way in the back, Dana's making his way here. Dana Tomeo, Secretary of Board, to report on board actions. Dana. Well, I get to tell you about some good stuff that the board did yesterday in your name and with your help. Your board of directors met yesterday in a lengthy session, had several important items of business to share. This is the Skeletal uh, Reader's Digest version outline of that. Uh, housekeeping in membership matters. We welcome back Rhonda Marks after short absence. Rhonda is a volunteer coordinator for Best Hospice and will hold the classification Healthcare-Volunteer Coordinator. We approved a new member proposal for Kim Johns, Partner Vendor Relations Marketing for Plumbing Solutions. She was proposed by D. Lane. A classification will be plumbing dash commercial and i'm obligated to say that if you have an objection to these memberships uh please register those with uh, our president brad or with jackie within the next 10 days uh amy dansby's membership ended by termination and then to help our recruitment efforts which is uh, a brad brown uh incentive and also uh the international president's incentive uh, the board approved a request from the recruitment committee to sponsor the Young Professionals Organization After Hours series. This is gonna give all of us an opportunity to meet with young professionals and to talk to them about Rotary and to talk to them about potential membership in Rotary. Uh, and you've been generous in your donations to the Louisiana Aid Fund after Ida. <clears throat> There's been, there's still a little time to put your money in the bucket. Uh, and today is the final collection day for that. The board yesterday voted 
to request matching funds from the Rotary Foundation. So we're going to double out your donation, if at all possible. So uh, make a contribution, if you will. The money is going to the Rotary Club of Golden Meadow, Louisiana. That's a small community with big needs. Uh, they're down past Homa. They're between Cutoff and Port Fouchon. <laughs> but uh, they'll be very grateful for it. And the folks in Louisiana were very generous with us. We ought to be generous with them. And speaking of matching funds, uh, Les Floyd McSpadden, he found a, a, a donor, uh, and we've graciously accepted the generosity of a donor who wants to challenge you and all of us to give to eradicate polio. October is our polio emphasis month, and you're going to be hearing a lot about that over the next month. Throughout that month, we'll be accepting donations to the Rotary Foundation for the worldwide goal of eliminating, eradicating polio. And we are this close. The donor has agreed to match two for one up to $1,000. So $1,000 makes three. So if you will make your donation through Marco Polio Pig back over here, or give Jackie a check uh, made payable to the Beaumont Rotary Foundation. And even though she's on her way out, you can give her cash. We trust her. We're going to continue to collect money through the end of the month in October uh, for this purpose. We're looking forward to working again on Sleep with Heavenly Peace projects. The next time we get together, it's not going to be a build. It's not going to be one of those manufacturing situations. It's going to be distributing and taking to the houses the beds that have been, uh, the components of the beds that have been manufactured and, and assembling those. We're going to have a, a joint deal <clears throat> with the 100 plus black men of Beaumont, Port Arthur Rotary, Lamar Rotaract, and us. So we need to hold up our end of it. We're going to deliver beds to children and teens in Beaumont and in the general area. This is October 23rd, Saturday, October 23rd. Mark your calendar. You're going to hear more about that further down the road. One more thing, because we were busy. Uh, we approved a significant change to the Rotary scholarships that we give every year. In past years, the scholarships were based on community service, leadership potential, and academic achievement. In the future, coming up in the spring, Scholarships are going to include a mandatory financial need component. The actual wording of the criteria begins by saying that the scholarships are to be awarded to students with substantial ties to Beaumont, Texas, who are in need of financial assistance to attend college. More to come on that. This will circle back in the spring when uh, people are looking for applicants for these scholarships. And now our beloved big shot boss man, Brad Brown, has a presentation to make to our beloved but former president, Cindy Cherry, who is getting a presidential citation because she did a great job last year under bad circumstances. And, yep, they, the, their goals set for reaching this certification, and doggone if she didn't meet them. So bless you, Cindy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dana. Yes, indeed. The uh, Rotary citation issued to uh, presidents of clubs who uh, meet and overachieve during their, those, their year, and Cindy certainly did that. We're proud for her. We're proud of our club. Uh, we're proud of the work you did this last Saturday at the Nest Project at Martin Elementary. Uh, and a, a uh, thank you all, and a great job that you all did. Uh, I know Kevin was there and his crew. If you were there and you're in the room, would you stand so we can show our appreciation to you? Michael in the back, Tim and Cindy, thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you all for being there, representing Rotary Club in the best that we are uh, and the way we're working at Martin Elementary, our adopted school. I'm very proud of that project. It's not a small thing. Um, that we've undertaken there at the nest and we look forward to uh, the dedication of that space. Look for that information ahead. You know, we're still, uh, as Dana mentioned, we're still collecting funds for um, the Louisiana Rotary Club to help them. Uh, Lynn Hill, you have a, an announcement about um, Martin Rohr. 
Lynn Hill is the board liaison for our community service projects. Good afternoon, Rotarians and guests. It is I, once again, coming before you to solicit your wonderful bodies, your minds, and your time to help with our most precious commodity, our children at our chosen school, Martin Elementary. SOAR and ROAR are the projects that we'll be doing there ongoing this year along with the NEST. Uh, SOAR and ROAR will start out virtually this year, but it will also continue with the virtual option. So if it's, you know, too big a time for you to leave your office and get to the school, you don't have to worry about that. You'll have a chosen time. You log on to your computer, you click, you'll have your child that you'll work with. Either you can read with them or if you're doing the SOAR option, there are options for science, math, as well as reading to work with your student. It's easy peasy to do. You go to the website, bmtisd.com, and you'll click the volunteer families, then volunteers, and uh, click the volunteer application link to register for the app garden. Then you're gonna click to register for the application check the email address that you provided to confirm your registration. Then you'll receive an email to, to activate your App Garden account and then confirmation to begin your volunteer application. Sign in with your credentials and begin the application process. It takes about three or four weeks or so to get it all approved. And now there is an option when you go under to select your group, we have Rotary there. So that way you can just select the group for Rotary. That's very easy. Easier is when you look at your Rotary Gram, the one from this past week, the one from next week, there is also a link in there. Click that link and then you can sign up to be a volunteer that way through the Rotary Gram easier. E the easiest thing to do of all is to see me, Teresa Simpson. We brought our laptops. Today, we can sign you up before you leave. We'll get you in and you can fill it out before you leave and that way you'll already be ready to volunteer. If you're a person who likes to, you say, okay, I think I like to do something with the kids. Nobody's too old, nobody's too young. But you know, I really don't like to do war, I mean, do, do the, um, what's the Zoom option, and I don't want to go in person. If you want to do that, and you don't want to do the Zoom from your home, get with me. We can sign you up for like a time on Wednesday afternoon, maybe, you know, 1, 1 1.30. I'll put it in my schedule to stay here. I'll bring my laptop, and you can work with your student then, or I can help you with your device on your phone. So... Let's all sign up. Those kids are waiting and they love to see your faces every week. Thank you. Sergeant at Arms, Jeff Beaver, would you lock the door? Let's get these people signed up. It's easy, as you said. I did it. How easy could it, how hard could it be? I'm telling you. Uh, Cheryl Bell, you here to speak to us about Rotary After Hours, right, this, this Thursday? Yes. But I first have to say something. I donated, boy, this is hard, in that box for Louisiana, and I have many, many friends in Golden Meadow, cut off, Fushan, uh, all down in there, and they've lost everything. And one of them from Golden Meadows coming to visit me this weekend to get away from the devastation. And um, I can't wait to tell him that we have made this donation. So open up your wallets, drop it in there. Thank you. Well, that was hard. Next, wind down with Rotary. Yes, we're still doing it. January 27th. I have tickets at the back. For those of you who have tickets now, I've got stickers you can take. So just come see me and then you can re-sticker. They're just little stickers we put over the date. And sell, sell, sell the tickets or buy them yourself and give them away for Christmas gifts. Great idea. I'm giving mine all my, night, my neighbors. So next. Ready? Okay. 
Bobby socks, knee socks, panty hose. Sorry, boys, that's as far as we go. Tomorrow is raw, raw, raw. Sis boom, ba. Meet us at Madison's at 5.30. Kevin Reed has kindly donated us some snackadoos, and they're going to extend a happy hour until 7 for us. So if it happens to be raining, we can move inside. But let's pray that it's not going to rain because we've got some games planned for outside. Raw, raw, raw. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, Jay Wilson is going to talk to us about district training. He's the board liaison for district service. Jay. Hello, everyone. I'm not going to sing about Bobby Sox and all that other stuff, <clears throat> right? Uh, just a final reminder, folks, there is the district training this weekend in Livingston. Um, as has been mentioned, it's a great opportunity to network with other clubs from around the district. There's presentations on foundation, membership, public image, and a special presentation on human trafficking. It's 8.30 to 1.30 in Livingston, short drive. You want to make an even shorter drive, you can drive to your living room or your office and you can join via Zoom. But I'd urge everybody to attend. It's, a, it's great camaraderie and you'll learn a lot about what else goes on with the club. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. And now what we're all here to learn about, uh, our member, Dr. Shannon Allen, Superintendent of Beaumont Independent School District, will introduce our guest speaker. Dr. Allen? Well, good afternoon, everyone. It is my distinct honor and privilege to introduce our guest speaker for today, Ms. Audrey Collins. Ms. Collins is an instructional leader who proudly hails from Beaumont, Texas. Ms. Collins has devoted the last 19 years to education and the advancement of at-risk students. She is a 1997 graduate of Westbrook High School and a 2002 graduate of Sam Houston University. She is also a 2009 postgraduate student of Lamar University and is currently pursuing a doctorate degree from Lamar University with concentration in technology and education innovation. As an educator, Audrey has worked as an assistant, band director, special education teacher. She has been a curriculum coordinator, assistant principal, and for the past six years, she has served as an elementary school principal. In 2017, Audrey became the proud principal of Peach MacArthur, where her primary focus is academic and character excellence for her students in developing her staff to be the best 21st century educators possible. She genuinely believes in tapping into the talents of those around her in order to enhance the learning environment for her campus and all stakeholders. In 2020, the expansion of Peach Mac Author was born. The campus will be expanded from a traditional pre-K through fifth grade campus to a hybrid campus of pre-K through eighth grade students, which will be the first for the Beaumont Independent School District. The expansion will come full circle with the addition of eighth grade students in 2022. Peach Mac Author focuses on STEM, fine arts, career and technical development, and of course, doing what is best for all students, as well as the community members in the educational institutions that we serve. When Audrey is not working to prepare the next generation, she enjoys reading, she enjoys playing and teaching the clarinet, directing her church choir and spending quality time with her family. She is the proud mother of two amazing BISD students, James, who is seven, and Janiah, who is 14, as well as the wife of Mr. James Collins. Peach MacArthur is, MacArthur is truly blessed to have a leader like Audrey Collins. It is the first of its kind in the innovation that we are delving into in Beaumont ISD. And I'm so excited to introduce our speaker, who is an innovator, who is a dynamic leader in Beaumont ISD, Ms. Audrey Collins. Let's give her a round warm of a welcome. Good afternoon. Made me sound real good, huh? Right? <laughs> so I'm excited to be here. 
um, nervous, uh, but excited. Uh, I'm used to speaking to little people most of the day. Um, and with our expansion, I now speak to really tall ones now. Um, but I'm mainly with my kids and with my teachers. So I'm excited to be here just to, anytime I'm asked to speak about my campus and my kids, it brings me great joy. Um, so again, I wanna thank you, thank you guys for the opportunity to come in to, uh, and speak with you guys. Um, before I can kind of give you the full circle of who Peach MacArthur is, I got to kind of tell you how I got there, um, because it makes a difference in the story. Um, I was sitting real comfortable, and, and we talk about change, I got you. Um, <laughs> I was sitting real comfortable in a, my prior campus as that instructional leader. Um, I'd been all, type, all job descriptions on one campus for 15 years. I was a substitute, I was a teacher, a curriculum coordinator, assistant principal, and then my first principal position was all on the same campus over a span of 15 years. You know, and sometimes you get comfortable, you don't realize you're comfortable. Um, and I can remember it was July, 2017. I was in my office just ready for the school year to start and my cell phone rings and it's my boss, my immediate boss, Dr. Frank. Um, and you kind of go, Ooh, why is she calling me, <laughs> you know? Um, and she called and you answered, hello. <laughs> and she was like, hey, Miss Collins. And when she said Miss Collins, I knew change was coming. Um, and so she did, she said, hey, I need, this is what I need for you to do. And I went, well, no, I just bought a new house down the street. And then, you know, this, but I've been here, my kids here, you know? And she said, well, I know, but I need you to go. And I didn't understand it at the time, because sometimes when blessings come, sometimes they're disguised. Um, and I, I kept looking at, but what about me? And what about me? Um, and it didn't matter. My boss was very persistent. And she said, no, go ahead, pack your office. <laughs> I need you to go. Um, and one of my former teachers made a comment that really solidified the, the shift that was being made in my life. Um, she said, Ms. Collins, when you became our principal, we really needed you. But evidently, somebody needs you more than we do. So we need, so they, I got their blessing and then I transitioned over to Peach Mac Arthur. Um, and it was, it was a shock. I had, I was learning new systems, new people. I've, I'd never been in a position where I didn't know anybody. Um, and plus, when you come behind Dr. Anita Frank, who was the principal before me, you kind of go, ooh, big shoes to fill. Um, but in change, if your focus is on what's good for kids, it doesn't matter where you're stationed. And so when I took the spotlight off of myself of, oh, what's happening to me and why am I being moved? And I stopped and I looked at the faces of the 900 and now we're at 995 Peach MacArthur Cougars. And every day I get up, it's what's best for them. And evidently for the last five years, it's been, us being together as me as their principal. Um, so, you know, before I can talk about the expansion, I've got to tell you how blessed I am to be their principal. Um, Peach didn't need me. I needed Peach. And I didn't realize it five years ago that I needed to be in a place where we're all just working toward the same goal. Things have to be created. You, sometimes you just have to make things new. Um, and so Peach became that for me. And so, and so I love always getting a chance to talk about the kids, talk about my staff, and talk about my time there because it really shaped me into who I am today. Um, I truly believe had the shift not happened, um, I may not be the instructional leader that I'm growing into at this point because sometimes, again, you get comfortable sometimes. And sometimes change has to come to kind of shake your world up. But if you put the right perspective on it, it will pay off in dividends. And so each day, the perspective, it's my kids. I call them all my babies, even my big seventh grade boys, they're all my babies. Um, my seventh graders have been with me since they were second graders. And so they're used to, you know, just all my babies and they're my friends. And I try to learn all their names, but I haven't quite gotten to all 1000 of them yet. Um, but they know when I say, hey friend, they know it, everybody turn around. Um, so again, I, you know, I have to kind of give you a background to how I got to Peach before I can kind of tell you about Peach, um, because it really was, we needed each other. And so, um, it, each day we're growing and we're learning, expanding. So I always call my Peach transfer, uh, it was just a blessing in disguise. I didn't know I needed it. Um, but once I got there and started doing the work, 
And again, the work revolves around the kids. Um, the slide, oh, we did have a slideshow. Um, and it's just pictures of the kids and things. But one of my mottos that I say, anytime I hire somebody, anytime I interview, I always tell them, come to work and work. We come to work and work and we work for kids. We don't do what's comfortable for adults. Because sometimes if you always go to adult conference, the kids lose out in the end. So anytime we do an initiative, anytime we do a change, the first question my staff will tell you, the first question I ask, how does it benefit kids? Not how does it make my job easier or your job, how does it benefit kids? Because in the end, that's what we're there for each and every day. Um, so then in, was it 2020, right before the pandemic, um, I was meeting again with Dr. Frank. See, anytime Dr. Frank comes to my office, I know something's to change. Um, and so she, she, you know, she's always real chipper and happy. And she goes, hey, how do you feel about your fifth graders? And I said, well, I like them. I, mean, I love them. Most, you know, it's my babies. It's time for them going to middle school. <laughs> you know, they get to that age. And she was like, how do you feel about keeping them? I said, like, we retaining all of them? Doc, that's a lot of kids. <laughs> and she said, no, 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 no how do you feel about keeping them as sixth graders? And I went, well, the building would accommodate them. I said, that's, you know, okay, let's, let's kind of explore that. Well, then it went from keeping sixth graders to, hey, how about you just keep them to the ninth grade? And I went, whoa. <laughs> um, and I was always the teacher. I was like, oh, I'll never go to middle school. You know, educators, we kind of block ourselves into a, a, a age group. And I was always elementary, except when I was a high school band director. And so I was like, oh, but I like the little ones. And so it was like, okay, well, where are we going to put them all, Dr. Frank? I mean, it's a lot of kids. Then it was, oh, then Dr. Allen was like, oh, just take the building next door. And I was like, oh, two buildings. Okay. And so we started with uh, welcoming the kids in. And when the expansion was mentioned to the parents, the first question they asked, which, again, when you're in the right place, you don't have to do a lot. Of, of extra. The first question that parents ask, will you be my kid's principal? And I went, whoa, that, that you've made an impact when parents will say, I don't mind if you're the principal. Um, and so that just solidified that I was in the right place doing the right work. Um, and so we did, we started the journey adding our sixth graders. Um, and there, there are non-traditional sixth grades. So your typical middle school, they follow a set pattern. They have either four or eight classes a day. They rotate constantly throughout the day. Um, so I was given the freedom to do a non-traditional type of schedule. So my sixth graders, um, they only have no more than three teachers. And so they spend most of their instructional time in a classroom versus transitioning, walking halls, going from class to class. Because when you do the math, you make transition anywhere between 20 to 40 minutes throughout the day. It adds up over the course of a school year. And that's time we need back in the classroom. Um, so there was a different. And a lot of kids were ready to go to middle school for that freedom. And then when they was like, we stand with Miss Collins, they knew, oh, no, it's not going to be the same kind of freedom. Um, but it's what they need developmentally. They still need to be under that structure of a set schedule. They need a homeroom teacher to make those um, connections with every morning and to minimize a lot of movement. Um, and so we started with sixth grade, um, and that went really well, even in a pandemic. Um, the kids were successful. They were happy. The parents were happy. Um, and then we've now this year added seventh grade. And I was telling, talking to my, my next door neighbor right here. Um, and I said, there are two, two age groups in uh, elementary and secondary that you kind of go, oh, fourth grade and seventh grade. And now I have both. And so you kind of go, oh. Uh, and so, you know, the seventh graders, they're dating. We're doing Instagram. We have to have an issue about catfishing. And so there are lots of new <laughs> adventures that even as the principal that I'm learning, because again, it wasn't in my wheelhouse. And so we're all learning and growing together. So at seventh grade, it is my little baby. That's my baby, my little infant that we're working on. Um, but my kids are happy. And in a, in a world right now where things are so uncertain, when there are so many unknowns with kids, to be able to come to the same space five days a week for eight hours. Some of our kids are with us for 10 hours because they're in after school programs and they're happy and they're safe. It's not a perfect world, but the kids want to be at school. Uh, when we have extended breaks, Thanksgiving or Christmas, they're crying not to go home. Um, and one thing I say to my kids every morning after I end the announcements, if no one's told you that they love you this morning, Miss Collins just didn't, there's nothing you can do about it. 
But when we go home for breaks, the kids will say, well, who's going to tell us they love us? Again, when you're in the right place, it pays off. Um, and I said, but I'm going to say it one last time before y'all walk in, but you've got to remember it. Um, and one day I forgot to say it, Lord Jesus. Um, <laughs> and every time the class passed, you didn't tell us you loved us today. You didn't tell us, you know, so I had to get on now and kind of love the children. Um, when, my, when my middle school kids transitioned, um, I have an assistant principal that kind of operates that building full time. Well, she didn't say the tagline that I've, that I've said to them for years. And I didn't realize, again, the connections you make when you are with a group of kids. And it took one of my seventh graders telling me at jump, run and start, nobody going to tell us they love us in the morning? I say, well, what do you mean? He said, nobody says if no one's told that they love you this morning, Miss Collins just did. And I went, oh. And I didn't, again, when you set a climate and a culture where kids feel safe, they remember those things. And so it, the first change we made was to the morning announcement. And I told my APs, you better tell my babies you love them every morning if I can't be there. I thought I would be able to get, do announcement in my building, run next door and do announcement there. Didn't quite work out like I thought. Um, so, the, you know, so but they're, they're told that they're loved every morning. Um, and so the first priority with the expansion was to be sure that no matter who was in charge, the kids were always first. And that every space they walk in, they feel accepted, they feel safe, and they feel loved. If you cannot establish that, you close the doors and go home. Uh, because kids will first remember how they felt before they remember anything you, you teach them. So that's, that's big for our community at Peach MacArthur is to be sure we take care of our kids. So one of the things we do with our expansion is um, what's called SEL, social emotional learning. It's a daily practice. We do check-ins with our kids because my, my kids come from sometimes some tough situations that we may not even imagine kids live in. And school becomes that safe place for them to unload their burden sometimes. So we do check-ins, it's, it's non-negotiable, check-in with the kids each and every day. So that's our SEL time that we hold very sacred to um, check-in with our kids. And some of our kids need extra check-ins, so everybody have somebody. Um, I, I have my typical morning duty spot where my kids, they come, we give hugs, fist bumps. Um, we talk about what happened the day before, but there are some that they come stand by my office door and they wait for their time and we check in and we get it, you know, get life together and we go on about our day. Um, so as we are expanding, no matter what we add, it's always with the kids first. The kids have to be first. So just some of the things that we're doing at Peach MacArthur, number one, we do have a new school name. We're no longer Peach MacArthur Elementary. We are Peach MacArthur Pre-K through eight Center. Uh, so that is our new school name. We did change colors. We used to be red and black. We're now green and black so that we can still do a um, kind of a head nod to the South Park area with the gr color green. So we did keep, uh, we did change to the color green to honor the South Park area. Um, next year we'll add eighth grade. So that'll be our, we'll be full circle next year. I say, wow, I get you from three to 14. <laughs> Um, and it's, it's interesting when you think about seeing kids progress that far. And I've taught for a long time, but when they, leave, when they left me as fifth graders, I might see them as seniors graduating. But to actually see a kid that was seven and now he's 13, <laughs> it's, interest, it's exciting to see them develop. And because you've been an instrumental part in instilling core values into them, you see them hang on and it, it creates the productive adult that we all want them to be. Um, so that's exciting. But some of the things that we're offering to our kids, um, robotics. So we did start robotics last year. We did have a competition team. And again, it's opportunities that some of our kids may never have gotten if it wasn't at the school. Um, so we do robotics. We have what's called makerspace, which is really fun. Um, the kids, we give them non-conventional items to make conventional things. Um, and so we had, we gave them old keyboards. Um, so if you have, you know, old technology, old things you looking to get rid of, we'll take them. Um, the kids are learning to dismantle um, electronics and rebuild them into something new. They took keyboards and made bracelets, necklaces, keychains, um, just different little things, but it's all about the problem solving. Um, a lot of kids nowadays don't have that problem solving skill set. Because um, a lot of things are technology, it's instant gratification. They, there isn't a wait time with a lot of things that our kids do nowadays. So for them to have to think through a program, create a blueprint for it, and then execute it, it really, um, it helps them 
in their other classrooms well with critical thinking skills. We are one of the first campuses with esports. So video games is now a class. It is actually a career, a very lucrative career. So we actually have a class where it's called esports, which will be governed by UIL. It's eventually going to become an actual sport. Um, so we are one of the first um, campuses to have an esports gaming class, of, and eventually we'll have a gaming team. Um, and there are opportunities for kids to make a lot of money playing video games. But with that, you also tie in the coding. Um, there's, uh, it's not just let's sit and play video games. So there are lots, there are a lot of components that they have to learn first before they're playing video games. But we do have a team, so it's exciting. Um, we're going to be starting a girls coding club. Um, Cause again, the big push is to be sure our girls know science and math is for them too. Um, so we are gonna introduce that. We have an actual art club um, that's done digital work as well as a traditional art, a theater, theater arts club and class. We have a band and you know, and I'm a, I'm a, I have, I have a muse degree. I was in the band for many years of my life. So again, that's like my happy space and I get to go in my happy space every day. I want to walk into the band hall. Um, we started the program last year with not a lot of kids, new band director, he started recruiting and we're up to 70 kids. Um, so they're working hard to do their first presentation for our homecoming game because we have a football team. <laughs> so we'll have homecoming, we have a volleyball team, uh, we have UIL cheerleaders, we have dance, we'll have track, golf, everything that's anywhere else will now be housed at Peach Mac Arthur. Um, and so when I think about it, I go, ooh, that's a lot of stuff. Um, Cause we'll eventually have, we'll be 10 grade levels under one, not one roof, cause we're in two buildings, uh, but it's 10 grade levels and everything that goes with that because I'm one, give my kids everything that they can have opportunities to experience. Um, uh, let's see, we do, we have a state award winning student council. Um, last year when we did our student council portfolio, we did win sweepstakes and the student council sponsor is sitting right here. Um, so that was, that was huge because not many schools were able to complete the rubric. Um, we, did, we have our state um, championship for a student council. We big push on literacy. If, they're, if they can't read, then life is a struggle for them. Uh, so every day at three o'clock, Ms. Collins jumps on her Zoom and she reads to the campus, to any teacher that has opportunity to Zoom in with me. So that's our daily Cougar read aloud. And it's a quick read, maybe six or seven minutes. Um, but it's amazing the next day, the kids will pass me, oh, you read about the Gruffalo. Oh, we read about uh, where the wild things are. So you're, we're constantly pouring those small drops of literacy into them to spark that learning and that love for reading. Um, I also, I love science. So once a month I do what's called parking lot science. And that was kind of birthed out of the pandemic because we couldn't have people in the building. So I started doing monthly science experiments by Zoom. And then one day I happened to say, well, let me just go outside. And I was just gonna Zoom from outside. I always give the kids the supplies that they need for the, pro, for the um, experiments they can do it at home. And that day was the Mentos volcano. So the kids came through, they picked up their soda and their Mentos. And the plan was for them to then go home. When I Zoom at five, you get on with me and we'll do it together. Well, they didn't leave. They just stayed. <laughs> and I was like, well, y'all go, no, Ms. Collins, we're gonna stay here with you. So we did, we spread out in the parking lot and I had 75 kids making Mentos volcanoes. Um, lots of soda everywhere. Um, but we talk about the science behind it, carbonation surface area. Um, then we do controls and we do variations of the experiment. But it, my kids were like, Ms. Collins, we've seen this on YouTube, but we've never got to do it. We've always seen it, but they, so trying to find those opportunities that stuff they see on TV, that they may not be afforded at home is, you know, one of the things behind our signs. We've made snow, we've did um, elephant toothpaste. You, it foams up and it kind of explodes. Um, but the volcanoes has been the most popular. So we'll continue with our parking lot signs because it was a big hit. Um, and lastly, one of our things is our nest. So we were, I like to call Peach the blueprint for the nest. <laughs> um, we were the original nest that opened. And without you guys, it wouldn't have happened. Um, you guys were the sweat equity behind our nest. 
um, putting together our furniture, helping us prime walls, uh, purchasing supplies for the room, um, coming in on a Saturday to be sure our nest was ready for the, um, the painter to paint the scene. So again, it wouldn't have happened with all you guys. And again, full circle that I'm here to be able to thank you, your organization in person. Um, but our nest is a product of the love that you guys show to Peach Neck Arthur. So we do appreciate that. Um, and so that nest will be where our kids will get. Um, we're going to start with our CTE, uh, where our kids can see careers that they can, that are in their area, in our industry. Um, we'll also use it for reading groups and um, theater groups. We'll bring musicians in for our kids to kind of connect our two programs in our uh, main elementary campus and our expansion. Um, so again, thank you to the Rotary Club for your donations and help with our NIST, the original, the blueprint. Um, so if you're ever on my campus, you're here is referred to the school as the block. Everything is the block. The kids now know our school is the block. And because we now actually take up the entire 4,500 block of Holland. Um, so we call ourselves the block. You know, it's the, the little bit campus um, that we, we just, we, any way we can expand and grow. And if it's going to benefit kids, that's what we do at Peach MacArthur. And again, it's not perfect. None of us are perfect. But if every day we strive to be, be sure kids are successful, then the job has been well done. Um, lastly, um, I tell my staff, we're on a rescue mission and we need help. Um, we are trying to recover a lot of learning loss with our kids. Um, and it's, it's, it, is take, it takes everybody. We are definitely on a rescue mission. We're in beast mode, as Dr. Allen tells, we're in beast mode because we cannot allow what has happened with the pandemic and things to halt the learning of our kids. And so it looks different. The work is difficult sometimes, but it has to be done and we're going to do it. And progress is not always where I want it to be, but we're always making progress. Never ask for perfection, but I require from my teachers that our kids make progress. They have to grow in order to be successful once they leave our doors. And for us, we have them for a long time. Um, there's no, you can't turn around and say, well, what school you came from? Well, you just came from next door. So, <laughs> so we have to be sure that the job we're doing every day will lead to continued success with our kids. Um, moving forward, one of our next goals is to extend into our community. Um, helping your community is twofold. Yes, we help the kids each and every day, but we're looking for ways to help our parents as well. Um, so that's kind of one of our next uh, goals forward is how can we help our parents? What tools can we give our parents beyond the basic, you know, this is the curriculum your child is working on. Is it GED classes? Is it um, language proficiency classes? Is it computer classes? So we're looking to expand um, just not within the walls, but to expand onto the community uh, to be able to help our parents. Because when you help parents, it helps kids as well. So if the school and the parents are on the same, on the same team, kids will benefit twofold. So we're looking for, um, we're looking for that type of momentum next. And um, again, I'm gonna close because I could continue to talk about my kids all day long because I love them. Um, without them, I would not be who I am today. Um, when I first went to Peach, it was not, I realized it wasn't the fear of moving and changing. It was the fear of not being good enough to be their principal. Because when a campus sometimes require more than other campuses, sometimes you don't feel like you, you're prepared to take on that type of assignment. Um, but again, when you stop and put the kids in focus, it all works out. And you keep pushing every day, every day. So every day I tell my kids, we're putting our best face forward. And face stands for we're focused on academic and character excellence. If we can get those two, that character and that academic excellence, we have produced an, a, a human that will contribute to their community and to society. So that is our goal each and every day. And I speak it into them every day. It's on posters. We are focused on your academic and character excellence. And when you get those aligned, kids will flourish and your staff will too. So again, I'm gonna close. I thank you. Thank you so much for allowing me to come and to speak. Thank you, Dr. Allen and Dr. Frank for trusting me to go to Peach to, um, to lead that campus um, and then with the expansion. So I do appreciate it. Um, and I love it each and every day. Uh, so again, I appreciate everybody listening. I thank you for your attention. And again, we're on a rescue mission. If you would like to be a part of the rescue team, 
sign up to be a volunteer. Uh, we, and we appreciate your help uh, in any way possible. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Collins. Thank you for being here. Uh, you're an inspiration to all of us and you provide us hope uh, for the future of uh, children of our community and for Beaumont. Uh, it's wonderful to have you here. Dr. Allen, thank you for uh, introducing us to her and we uh, applaud you and your work for the good you're doing to our community. Um, thank you. And, uh, as appreciation, uh, of your being here in honor of you being here, we're making a gift in your name to the Rotary Foundation with emphasis on education. Thank you, Ms. Collins. I'm, I'm sure others like me may have questions and you can find Ms. Collins here at the head table uh, if she would stay a, a bit uh, to entertain questions that we have like 10 years with kids. That's good news and bad news, but uh, thank you for being here. Next week, our speaker is Brenda Rodriguez. She's the president of the Junior League of Beaumont. They're celebrating their 75th year of community service this year, and you'll want to uh, be here, invite a friend. If you know uh, a lady in Junior League, you'll want to invite her to come join you. Um, you know, I've asked you all year, everyone bring one this would be a good chance um hope to see you at rotary after hours that's tomorrow at madison's foods on kevin i understand thank you and make him empty his pockets everyone remember uh theme this year is everyone bring one i want to see you do that thank you to uh rosie on uh zoom and alan here and and um Mary introducing guests and Dr. Allen for being here at the adult table with us. And I ask you to please stand and say the four way test of the things we think, say, or do. First, this is the truth. Second, it's fair to all third, it will build goodwill and better friendships. And fourth, it will be beneficial to all concerned. Thank you. Have a great week and serve to change lives. Yeah.